This is the Tesseract. It has the potential energy to wipe out the planet. What does Fury want me to do? Swallow it? Aren't you the cutest little thing? Aren't you cute? And what's your name, huh? Fury. What's you? I'll be back. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. These are going to be all my Captain Marvel Easter eggs from the movie. There were all kinds of 90s jokes and references, including Easter eggs for internal stuff within the MCU going back to the first Avengers movie, paying off a lot of big setups from way, way back. We'll do a new round of the IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Marvel comment on the video. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet, or maybe you haven't seen it and you don't care and you just want to know what all the Easter eggs are. So we'll work our way down the list. There are a little over 20 of these, starting at the beginning of the movie, working our way to the end with the Stan Lee intro. Thank you, Stan. They edited Stan Lee's cameos in all of the scenes of him inside the MCU, as well as some external scenes of him with the actors, just showing how important he is to Marvel Studios and what they became came today. It was a really touching memorial to him, but that wasn't the Stanley cameo. That's a completely separate scene. Number two, welcome back Blockbuster. Obviously Blockbuster, a big staple of the 90s. Now there is only one Blockbuster left in the United States. She crashes right through the roof. She blows Arnold Schwarzenegger's head off of a True Lies standee. She picks up the Right Stuff movie. She notices Hook as she walks past the movie aisle, bang -a -rang. Then she goes outside, asks the security guard about finding some gear. He points her to Radio Shack, also a big staple of the 90s. They're still around, but not quite as big. The minute she hits Earth, though, they start up with some of the 90s music references. They played What a Man by Salt and Peppa, Only Happy When It Rains by Garbage, Waterfalls by TLC, Come As You Are by Nirvana, Just a Girl by No Doubt. That was probably the song that I hated the most. Not a big fan of No Doubt or Gwen Stefani. Celebrity Skin by Hole and Man in the Moon by R.E.M. The Stanley cameo was great. It was actually really meta because it's Stanley in real life on the train on his way to film a scene for Mallrats, which technically is not his first Marvel cameo, but it is his first movie cameo talking about Marvel stuff. So that's what it gets credit for. And it's just a really cool scene. It also works really well, too, because the cameo that Stanley is doing is cameoing as himself in real life. And that's also what he did in the Mallrats movie. He was playing himself during that movie. Kelly Sue DeConnick, the writer of the Captain Marvel arc that they adapted for the movie Higher, Further, Faster, had a brief cameo in the subway station. She brushes past her, looks at her. She's a woman with red hair, but if you blink, you will miss it. There were so many jokes about 90s computers in the 90s version of the internet being super slow, dial-up internet, Alta Vista. She sits down at the computer and it boots her off because the line is busy. Then later in the movie, they have the joke about the disk spinning up to access the information and it takes forever because it is slow as hell. She uses Game Boy parts to repurpose a communicator to call the Kree to tell them to come back to planet Earth and pick her up. Then when they're at the dive bar, there's a Street Fighter 2 arcade cabinet in the background. She pulls a Terminator 2 when she steals Rob Kaczynski's bike. She grabs the Nine Inch Nails t-shirt off of the mannequin. The funny thing about it is that that's actually a bootleg t-shirt that they had to make for the movie because they couldn't get an original one. When Nick Fury is telling her about his personal history, he talks about all the places he went during the Cold War. He named Budapest. Budapest is a place that has been mentioned or seen a couple different times in the MCU. We also find out that his middle name is Nicholas Joseph Fury, but even his mother calls him Fury. If I ever have children, they'll call me Fury too. We find out the origin of the special Captain Marvel souped up space pager at the end of Avengers Infinity War in that post credit scene is just regular Nick Fury's pager that he uses for shield business that Carol then repurposes. One of the really big changes they made from the comics is that Walter Lawson, aka Marvel original Captain Marvel from the comics, is Wendy Lawson. They gender bent her, and for the purposes of the MCU, she is now a Kree scientist working undercover trying to use the Tesseract to build a faster than light engine. The really cool thing about that is that she gets the Tesseract and helps found Project Pegasus, which got mentioned way back during Iron Man 2. I've already done a couple videos about that with the help of Tony Stark's father, Howard Stark. So Howard Stark built Project Pegasus because ever since World War II, he's been in possession of the Tesseract. When Wendy Lawson came along for Project Pegasus, he gave the Tesseract to her to try and study. We don't know whether or not Howard Stark knew that she was an alien, but he's pretty smart. So it's implied that he was working with her because she was a relative good person. She was helping hide all those scroll refugees, so she couldn't have been that bad. That's how the Tesseract got into her ship in outer space. A lot of questions about how it went from Howard Stark to Wendy Lawson. Basically sometime in the late 80s, he handed it off to her. That's when she got it. 
Nick Fury drops a great laser tag reference when he's making fun of her costume. Monica Rambeau is a big character during the movie, obviously a big comic book character. We don't know if they're going to turn her into a superhero or an Avenger in a future movie. It kind of seems like based on the ending of the movie, they foreshadowed that, but she's talking to her mother. She drops all kinds of 90s references, talking about watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air instead of going to help Carol. When Monica Rambeau is helping play with the colors of her costume, they cycle through a couple different comic book costumes. One of them is the white and green costume that the original Captain Marvel, Marvel, Walter Lawson wore when he first debuted in the comics. This is a super deep cut. She cycles to another one that's Nova colored, making her look kind of like the Nova superhero of the comics. She cycles to the black and gray one that she wore in the comics for a little while. Then she cycles to the red, blue and gold one that she's been wearing for the last several years in the comics. There are so many Goose the Cat references. They put a Hannibal Lecter mask on him and Nick Fury even calls him Hannibal Lecter. There's a whole bunch of secret invasion Easter eggs. The scrolls stay, why can't we stay on planet Earth? We could live here. They say it wouldn't be safe for us. Kevin Feige actually directly talked about the secret invasion storyline of it all. They did say that these scrolls are just the good ones and just like any other space-based race, they're good people and they're bad people within their species. So that's just him leaving the door open saying, yeah, we'll probably do some sort of secret invasion storyline in the future with evil scrolls. But he didn't say when that would happen. There's a couple different Sam Jackson Pulp Fiction references. When he's riding with Coulson in the car, it's just like them riding in the car to go get the briefcase. When Talos walks into the house, drinking that drink is just like Sam Jackson drinking the drink during Pulp Fiction. That was a tasty beverage. Probably one of the biggest Easter eggs is just how she got her powers. So, like I said, Wendy Lawson, aka Marvell from the comics, was experimenting on the Tesseract to make a faster than light engine. That energy blew up and fused Captain Marvel, so she gets her powers in the very similar manner to the way that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver got their powers from the Mind Gem, only Captain Marvel's come from the Space Stone. There was all kinds of 90s pop culture inside Marvel's research ship. There was the Nerf gun that Min Irva tries to shoot Captain Marvel with, not understanding what a Nerf gun is. There's Happy Days stuff, there's troll dolls, pretty much every kitschy thing that you could have collected during the 90s. The call signs were also a really big deal too. So her friend Maria Rambeau's call sign is Photon. That's one of the superhero names that Monica Rambeau, her daughter, takes in the comics when she gets her superpowers. But also probably the biggest retroactive Easter egg is, is in giving Captain Marvel the call sign Avenger. That was her call sign when she was a pilot. So at the end of the movie, when Nick Fury is drafting up what is his first draft of the Avengers initiative, he's calling it the Protector Initiative, but then looks at the picture of her, sees that her call sign says Avenger, and gets the idea to call it the Avengers Initiative. So Captain Marvel is the inspiration for the name of the Avengers. But it's very important to note that nobody in the movie at any point ever calls Carol Danvers Captain Marvel, so they'll probably do that during Avengers Endgame. The Supreme Intelligence, big comic book character, we never actually got a look at its true form, and because it's still alive at the end of the movie, I'm assuming that they're going to bring it back as a character in a future space-based movie, maybe the Captain Marvel sequel. Like Ronan the Accuser says that he's going to come back for the weapon, the woman, so very clearly he's going to come back in the sequel and be a bigger villain. Yon Rog is also still a villain and still alive at the end of the movie, so he'll probably be a bigger villain in a Captain Marvel sequel. The way they explain the MCU supreme intelligence is that it's not an organism, it's actually an artificial intelligence that when it's talking to you will take the form of someone that you admire, which is why it looked like Marvel when she was talking to it. Goose the Cat is a Florkin from the comics. They just basically have this giant maw can consume anything. Goose eating the Tesseract, then throwing it up in that last post credit scene. Obviously a very funny moment, big twist. But it's also a callback to a line of dialogue that the Hulk had during the first Avengers movie. So like there were a lot of moments tying this to the original Avengers so that when she shows up, it'll be like, oh wow, you were kind of the inspiration for a lot of this stuff. But the funny Avengers reference is when the Hulk is talking about the Tesseract going crazy, he talks about it being able to destroy the entire Earth. What does Fury want me to do? Swallow it? Just like Goose the Cat swallowed the Tesseract. The Hulk could probably swallow it and survive, but the Tesseract and the Space Stone actually have a consciousness, so if it didn't want to have itself swallowed by the Hulk, it could transport him somewhere else just like the Red Skull. 
The obvious Avengers Endgame post credit scene is her showing up at the Avengers facility sometime shortly after the snap because Cap still has his beard but he's had a shower and they're a little cleaned up. Black Widow's hair is still really short. Ant-Man hasn't shown up in his van as far as we know. But the interesting thing too is the reason why she's so quiet is probably just for the twist. Her costume looks a little bit different but it's been 20 years. I've already done a post credit scene video talking about that so I'll link that at the end of this. I'm sure there's a billion more 90s references in the movie. If there's any that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments or any other big Easter eggs. What'll happen is, is there'll be a couple more Marvel videos this week, a lot of Avengers Endgame stuff coming up. Leave all your video requests in the comments below. Click here for my Captain Marvel post credit scene video and click here to rewatch the Avengers Endgame trailer a billion more times. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.